The second 3301 puzzle began exactly 366 days since the 2012 puzzle had begun. Nothing had happened in 11 months. On January 5, 2013, two threads were made, on slash x slash n slash b slash. Each of these threads contained a cryptic image with text. It said. Hello again. Our search for intelligent individuals now continues. The first clue is hidden within this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck. 3301. The image was processed by the steganographic tool OutGuess. The message deciphered was this. Welcome again. Here is a book code. To find the book, break this riddle. A book whose study is forbidden. Once dictated to a beast. To be read once and then destroyed. Or you shall have no peace. Followed by a book code. After a bit of debate by the solvers, the text that was used to encrypt the book cipher was discovered. The book that was used to hide the message was called Liber A.L. Legis by Aleister Crowley. Also known as the Book of Law, it is available online. After running the book codes, solvers came up with a hyperlink. The hyperlink directed to a Dropbox address with a file of 130 megabytes ready for download. After downloading, the file was analyzed and a quick check for header bytes revealed that the file was an .iso image. The image file was downloaded by multiple solvers and either burned to disk to run on a computer or opened in a virtual drive. Looking into its contents, solvers found three directories, data, boot, and audio. When booting from the image, a boot sequence appeared, printing a sequence of numbers from the screen. Investigating the sequence revealed that the live image prints out all prime numbers up to 3301. There were temporary two-second pauses at 1033 and 3301, where it stops at the latter and moves to the second stage. The next, and last stage of the procedure is a screen that reads. At 12315070513321. The key is all around you. Good luck. 3301. Here's a video of the boot image in action. Further analysis of the live image turned up the routine responsible for the display of the prime numbers. It is a Linux shell script, which, luckily, is human readable. It does not calculate prime numbers, but connected the printed command with a sleep command. In most cases, the sleep time is 0.5 seconds. In the case of the primes 1033 and 3301, the sleep time is 2 seconds, which manifested the relevance of those two numbers. Also found in the image was the 3301 PGP signature. The folder audio inside of the image file contained an audio recording. The title of the recording was 761.mp3 and can be downloaded online. Link in the description. It is the song that is playing in the background of this video at the moment. Have a listen. The ID3 tags show us that the title of the file is the Instar Emergence and the Artist 3301. The instrument used throughout the song is a guitar, 
with distorting effects on it. On the track, a reversed guitar is played and amplified throughout. The song has been deconstructed and checked for hidden messages, but as of yet nothing has turned up. The song is in the key of DB minor with a custom guitar tuning. Key points of the track is the initial breath sound, believed to be the sound of many cicadas and the tempo changes, beginning at approximately 135 BPM, accelerating to 145 BPM, then slowing to 125 BPM. This has led some to believe that the song has been slowed down by 5%. The only instruments used were a guitar, acoustic and electric and an effect-driven bass drum. A draft spectral analysis shows a constant hum at 15.4 to 16.4 kHz, and empty notches under 500 Hz starting from 1 minute 56 seconds. A hex dump of the MP3 file revealed the following message. The instar emergence. Parable 1,595,277,641. Like the instar, tunneling to the surface. We must shed our own circumferenx. Find the divinity within and emerge. The subgroup who were assigned the task of analyzing the poem and riddle have speculated that circumferenx might be a reference to perceived limitations rather than actual physical wall. Find the divinity within and emerge is most likely a reference to the divine ratio, or phi. Such shedding may also be a reference to the way cicadas shed their shells. It has also been pointed out that the song is 2 minutes and 47 seconds long, or 167 seconds in total, which is prime. It is also a reversal of the name of the file, 716.mp3 and 716 is also prime. While people still searched through the image to find more hints that may have been overlooked, solvers in the IRC chat found a Twitter account. Multiple things were strange about the Twitter. It fits the overall style of Cicada, it was registered shortly after the first downloads of the live image and it had no followers. It was later found to be the reference on the boot CD to at 12315075132121. Note that that the number in the Twitter account is a palindromic prime number. The strangest thing about the Twitter, however, was the messages it tweeted. Each tweet consisted of an offset, and 65 bytes of hex code. 3301 appears to have used a bot to post the tweets at 5 minute intervals up until midnight GMT January 7th, then on to 4 minute intervals until 1900 hours o'clock GMT January 7th, where it was seemingly random up until 2204 GMT January 7th, where it moved on to 2 minute intervals. The Twitter bot stopped posting tweets at 452 GMT on January 8th. The meaning of the tweets and the rest of the files left solvers stumped. After a full day of fruitless searching, an IRC user did the impossible and solved the next puzzle. This user took the 761.mp3 file, used a Linux shell command called XOR on it with the file produced by constructing the hex data from the Twitter account. The result was a .jpg file. It was possible to pre-construct the image resulting from the tweets. The .jpg appears to be a rune table, consisting of three columns, named rune, letter, and value, and 29 entries. Rune contains the actual rune character, letter contains one or more plain text characters and value contains a number. It is interesting to note that all numbers found in the value column are ascending primes, building the sequence of the first 29 prime numbers. The runes stem from the Anglo-Saxon rune set and the letters are in the order of the Anglo-Saxon runes. It was revealed that this is a full-on gematria which could be used to reveal numbers from different pieces of text. If you don't know what a gematria is, it is basically a way to get numbers from different letters. The instar emergence, for example, produces 761 when applied with the gematria, which is the name of the file and the file's signature reversed. It was soon discovered that this image, likely the very first one, contained a hidden message, once again masked via outguess. Solvers found a message on screen. After finally getting a message from 3301, the solvers found that it was mostly blank. The message, it turned out, 
contained a mixture of tabs and spaces. Solvers converted this to binary, then to ASCII, and found the next message. Come to MIP form u 2 ktwknfonion We shall await you there. Good luck. 3301. If you don't know, an Onion website can only be accessed to tour. Upon visiting the website, the solvers were greeted with the following message. Web browsers are useless here. www.cicada3301.com Welcome. Solvers soon found out that web browsers were indeed useless, and that they would have to telnet into the website through the Tor network. Some solvers did so, and found that the website included an interactive shell. They could type in any number to have it factorized, count to count up prime numbers, quit to quit and hello to return the message on screen. It was soon discovered that the messages could be turned into ASCII which created another message, again signed by 3301. The message reads as follows. Very good. You have done well to come this far. Snacksix 6 onion. Good luck. 3301. This led solvers to yet another dot onion address. Once solvers had found the second dot onion, the next logical step was to visit it with a browser. Upon arrival, they found the following. Patience is a virtue. Rummaging through the source code of the HTML, they found another hidden message. Patience is a virtue. Which means, come back soon. After a lot of waiting the second onion finally got updated. The solvers got the following hint. You already have everything you need to continue. Sometimes one must knock on the sky and listen to the sound. Good luck. This hint told the solvers that they needed to ping the website's IP address and listen to the reply. Each ping reply was laced with data bytes, which could be combined to make the following message. Well done. You have come far. PKLMX2E6FJT7ZF.Onion Good luck. 3301 On the third onion page the solvers reached a message instructing them to stand by for coordinates. They prepared to visit the addresses which these would undoubtedly lead them to. After some time, the website updated with coordinates. After traveling to the coordinates, solvers found a poster on a telephone pole. Each poster had a phone number as well as an access code. Each phone number either ended in 3301 or 1033. Calling the phone number gave an automated speech asking for a code to be typed into the dialer. Solvers soon realized they had to convert the access code into its gematrified format and type that in. Upon doing so many messages were given, with data set, offset and data. Each of the messages were different depending on where the poster was. The data, when X or read with the data set file from data, provided the user with a string of text, found to be an onion address. Note that all of the locations gave a different address. All in all, six of the locations had their codes recovered, while the seventh was not physically visited but the phone number obtained by war dialing all numbers ending in 1033. On each of these onion address, each solver was given an SSSS code, which stands for Shamir's secret sharing scheme. A secret sharing scheme allows someone to share a secret with a certain number of people, who each get their own string. Once enough of these secrets come together, they can be combined to create the final secret. Once 5 of 10 SSSS codes had been retrieved, they could be decrypted to form their message, which was another onion address. This onion address had a test which solvers had to take. Nobody knows what happened after this, excluding some leaks which I will cover now. Remember to take everything now with a grain of salt. The test though is real, and there is an Imgur album for it which I will link in the description. Here's a fast scrolling through all of the test pictures.
Anyways, after completing the test each solver was sent the following email to the address they had inputted. In the programming language of your choice build a TCP server. That implements the protocol below. The server code must be written by you and you alone, although you are free to use any modules or libraries publicly available for the selected programming language. Once you have done this, make it accessible as a tour hidden service. Then provide us with the onion address and port via a GPG encrypted email to this address. You have until midnight UTC on February 3rd. 2013. Any emails received after that time will be ignored. Good luck. 3301. Nobody knows what happened after this. Like the 2012 puzzle, all users who submitted their server to 3301 went silent and disappeared completely from the internet. Everything went silent. Until 2014. This is where our video ends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. We hope to see you soon once again.